Please be aware, in this podcast series, we talk about all areas of safeguarding, which some people may find upsetting. So please make sure you're okay listening to today's topic. Be mindful of those around you, such as children, that you might not want to listen in. Hi, I'm SSS Safeguarding Director Sam Preston. And I'm former head teacher and content author Sarah Spinks. So today we're talking about food safety and hygiene in schools. And I guess a lot of people listening might be thinking, what's that got to do with safeguarding? But stick with me and you'll soon see. So my usual co-host, Sarah, is um, on holiday, um, but I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague, John Case, who has a wealth of experience in this area. Welcome, John. Hi, Sam. Delighted to be here. So, John, my understanding is that all schools are legally required to be adequately trained to produce and serve food. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, And that's really important. A school is no different to any other restaurant, cafe, uh, food handling business. It's there's no difference. So just to put it in perspective, uh, schools, if you think about it, are amongst the biggest food producers. There's not going to be uh, cafes and restaurants in your area serving in potentially in excess of 1,500 covers per day. And that is, in fact, what some of the bigger schools will be doing every day of the week. Yeah, so in comparison, that will outstrip most restaurants and cafes. So why is it a safeguarding issue? Well, with that number of pupils at risk from poor processes and practice in the school kitchen, um, you can have a, a real significant effect. Uh, when you start thinking about uh, health uh, and impact both on the the physical effects of food poisoning and also the knock-on effects of not being able to attend class, that kind of thing. Yeah, so so we're really talking about mitigating sort of the potential impact a lack of food safety and hygiene could have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The importance of taking food safety and hygiene seriously in school and academy settings can't be understated. Uh, If food handlers are not adequately trained, uh, ignorance could well result in poor practice leading to illness caused by food poisoning and even the death of a pupil. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, I can give you one example. Although uh, poor practice in this case wasn't as a result of something that was happening in a school setting, uh, the school and many school children were affected. Back in 2005, there was an outbreak of E. coli 0157 in South Wales, resulting in 157 cases, most of whom uh, were children at 44 different schools across four local authorities. And this was simply due to poor practice causing cross-contamination at a butcher's that was supplying food, specifically meat, to schools. Um, Many children were affected and and one tragically died. Gosh, that's tragic. I noticed earlier you mentioned food handling. So we're not just talking about what goes on in the kitchen, are we? Yeah, that's right, Sam. We're we're talking about anyone that uh, handles the food, and that goes from preparation of the food to the service of the food. Yeah. So any form of food prep, for example, at breakfast clubs or, you know, barbecues at school fates, etc., Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Uh, All would be included, really. Um, Anyone who's working with food in that uh, type of process and setting should be adequately trained. Yeah. So I know from the courses that we provide um, that there are different levels of food safety and hygiene training. So what level of training would, you know, the school catering staff, would would they require? Yeah, so uh, all staff involved with preparation or service of food are required to complete training according to their role. And role is an important factor in deciding on the level of training required. So, for example, it's not acceptable to train a service uh, staff member to level one and then require them to be involved in the preparation of food. So without key knowledge delivered at level two, they may unwittingly make a decision that ultimately results in a food poisoning case or worse, an outbreak with many cases. So maybe could you just run through the basic differences then between levels one and two? Yeah, sure. Level one is for staff that serve food and undertake duties such as washing up and cleaning and that occasionally handle food. Um, So it's also suitable for teachers and teaching assistants running breakfast clubs or after school clubs 
providing low risk snacks, um, you know, primarily serving food that's already been prepared. And then level two uh, training is more for uh, canteen or kitchen staff and any other staff handling open food and preparing food in the school or academy setting. So am I right in thinking courses, whatever the level, are not only required to meet the legislative standards, but also to provide evidence of training for, you know, the local authority inspection um, that uh, are conducted on schools? And yeah, academies. that's right. School, schools are, are subject to local authority um, inspection uh, by an environmental health officer that, you know, would also happen to uh, a business uh, on the streets, uh, pubs, cafes, restaurants, that kind of thing. All right. So give us an outline. What can we expect food safety and hygiene training to cover? So, uh, D- depending, there's slightly different detail depending on whether you're looking at level one or level two or even level three. Um, but uh, typically, you would cover uh, the law around food safety and hygiene. Uh, you'd look at microorganisms, uh, so the, the food poisoning bacteria such as Salmonella, Campylobacter, and E. coli that we discussed earlier, um, cross contamination, uh, cleaning and disinfection, hygiene, hygienic process controls and food safety management. All of these things you need to be aware of in the round so that when you're working in that environment, you can understand things that can go wrong, basically, and make sure that they don't. Sure, sure. One thing I was thinking, we're focused on the health side, quite rightly, Um, you know, the potential risks. But I'm, I'm putting my senior leader hat on here, and I'm thinking of the impact on attainment and staffing that this could have. Absolutely. So um, attainment is going to be affected by attendance. Uh, And if uh, people contract food poisoning and and get an illness caused by a food poisoned organism, this will result in pupils missing school days. Uh, And also, it's not unusual for staff to eat in school canteens. If they were to uh, fall victim to a food poisoning organism, then whole classes will also miss out uh, with the teachers not being able to attend the lessons, obviously. So there's an impact there as well, not only from the uh, physical impact on the individual. Yeah, and and as always, keeping an eye on the purse strings, that may mean additional supply cover costs. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it really is essential. It's something I'm really passionate about, that food safety and hygiene training is taken very seriously in school and academy settings. Yeah, well, quite rightly so. Well, thanks, John. As with all areas of safeguarding, it comes down to duty of care and complying with legislative requirements and food safety and food hygiene definitely fall within that area. They are a safeguarding topic. For more details on this topic, um, you can access John's article, which is up on our website, um, where you can also find out more about the SSS learning training within this area.